We appreciate you all being here. Appreciate your hard work. Recently, the uh, Air Force selected Ebbing Air Force Base in Fort Smith, Arkansas to serve as the home of the F-35 training mission for our nation's partners and allies. Uh, this mission has been deemed uh, critical to our nation's national security as well as our partner nation's national security. Uh, those aren't my words. Those come from the very top on down. Uh, the Corps of Engineers in Little Rock, whom we enjoy working with, is responsible for the new construction for the mission at Ebbing uh, and will be tasked to meet a really very tight uh, turnarounds. Will you both commit to giving uh, the Little Rock District the resources it needs from the entire Corps of Engineers enterprise to meet their deadlines? Yes, sir. This falls under our military construction uh, uh, portfolio. Sir, the, the important part here is we've been given $10 million from the Air Force to develop the area development plan. So that will inform the detailed designs uh, moving forward and really help them get um, down to the level of detail we need to on the schedule. But yes, sir, you have my commitment to give them everything they need to deliver this important program. Good. Senator, any way the Civil Works program can support the military side of the House, we're happy to do that. Good. Well, thank you all very much. I, I knew that was the case, but but again, uh, this this is something that uh, the deadlines are tight, and it's just going to take everybody working together. The other thing is I'd like to also voice my support for the uh, Kramer-Heinrich bill. I, I'm a co-sponsor of that, too, and really been working with that for several years. But you've got problems at your parks. And uh, you do a, a great job in the sense, you know, it's, it's just such a, especially now, you know, with people, uh, I think, wanting to get out more after the pandemic and, and all that's occurred. But you've got troubles right now in Arkansas, throughout the Midwest, you've got a lot of flooding. Most of those campgrounds now are underwater. Uh, the Mississippi campground, you know, the list goes on and on. You, you've got a lot of maintenance that, that has been deferred. Uh, you can fix things now, and, and it costs some money. Uh, you can defer that, and, and it costs more money. And then it comes to a point where you have to replace it, and it costs a lot of money. So I, I do think that, that that's, it, it's a bill that would make a, a lot of difference if uh, uh, maybe 80% is too high. We can, we can work with that or whatever. But I do think that whatever money that we did in that, you, you'd actually receive benefit from. The cost benefit would be very, very good. Plus, you'd be able to, to update uh, the campgrounds and make it such where you'd have even more usage. I think it would actually pay for itself. But uh, uh, look at it. And again, your support, if, if somehow that could be acquired, would be very helpful. Uh, thank you very much for recognizing what an important part of this mission and the value of those additional resources might uh, provide. I, I did visit some recreational facilities last summer. You would not believe the lengths that our committed rangers go to oh, no, to, I, yeah, to yeah. try and ensure that the visitors have the best experience right. possible and have good facilities, uh, and we should make it a little easier for them, quite frankly. No, I, I understand. And sir, I would just echo that commitment. This is an important part of our of our mission. Um, I don't know the details of the legislation, but anything that supports our, our recreation function, full support. The other thing is, right now we're in the process. I'm the ranking member on agriculture. We're in the process of trying to pass a farm bill, and uh, we're going to get it passed this year. But it, it comes to mind, 40% of the products uh, in Arkansas are exported. That's true throughout most of the country. And so our inland waterways, our ports and harbors are so vital. Can you talk a little bit about, uh, again, the importance of, of that flow of trade and what that means, uh, uh, not, only, not only to those farmers, but also the end users? I mean, right now we've got the cheapest, safest food supply of any place in the world. You know, what does that do to cost and, and things like that? Yes, sir. I would just say in, 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 in your state, you have uh, toes, barges that uh, sometimes are a couple 15 barges together. And just to keep the analogy going, 15 barges, that's 1,000 trucks, 1,000 diesel engines, uh, 1,000 drivers that you don't need right. because of right. the movement of cargo on the waterway. And sir, it just drives the cost down uh, for goods and increases the speed of those goods getting to market. As I said earlier, these are national treasures, and we appreciate all the support we get from Congress in, in maintaining and upgrading those. Just a quick point, the, the old saying, we know the value of water when the well runs dry, 
Warren's dry well. We know the value of the inland waterway system when the Mississippi River I know, has low I flows. Last, last it was summer where I wanted to just jump in it and <laughs> claim it that I could swim across it. it was, <laughs> yes, remarkable. significant immediate economic impact from drought when the Mississippi River is that low and we can't efficiently move product and that you know reverberates to the agricultural committee. So uh, we are not looking just at how we manage the system in conjunction with industry. I think we had great communication and, and resources to keep the system dredged and moving, uh, but we also want to do lessons learned and make sure we're continuing to try and ensure that the next drought doesn't have as deep an impact. Right. And it is remarkable. Now the Mississippi, we've actually closed off part of it because it's so high. So thank you very much. Thank you.